This video explains the difference between the functions data.frame and s.data.frame in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So the first difference between these two functions is that the data.frame function can be used to create new data frames, while the s.data.frame function can not be used for this task. So if you want to initialize a new data frame, you could use the data.frame function, as you can see in lines 1 to 3. And within the data.frame function, you will need to specify the names of the columns that your data frame should contain, as well as the values that should be contained in these columns. So if we want to create a new data frame, we could use the data.frame function, as you can see in lines 1 to 3. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame object called data1 is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom of the RStudio console by running line 4 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that we have created a new data frame which contains five rows and the three columns x1, x2 and x3. Another difference between the two functions data.frame and s.data.frame is the output when we convert other data types to the data frame class. And we can see that in the next example. And for this, we first need to create a matrix object, as you can see in line six of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the matrix function to create a new data set that is called MET. So after running line six of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that this data object called MET is appearing. And we can print the content of this MET data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line seven of the code. And then you can see that we have created a matrix object containing three rows and four columns. Now we could convert this matrix to the data frame class using the s.data.frame function, as you can see in line nine of the code. And within this function, we simply need to specify the name of our matrix. And then we need to assign the output of the s.data.frame function to a new data set that I'm calling data2. So after running line nine of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data set called data2 is appearing. And we can print this data set to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 10 of the code. And then you can see that we have converted our matrix to the data frame class. And you can also see that the columns of this data frame are called v1, v2, v3, and v4. Now we could also use the data.frame function instead of the s.data.frame function to convert our matrix to a data frame. And this is what I'm showing in line 12 of the code. So in this case, we need to use the data.frame function. And within this function, we also simply need to specify the name of our matrix. And then I'm assigning the output of the data.frame function to another data set that I'm calling data3. So after running line 12 of the code, you can see that this data frame is appearing at the top right as well. And we can print it by running line 13 of the code. And then you can see that we have created another data frame. This data frame contains the same values as the previously created data frame. However, one difference between those two data frames is that the data frame created by the s.data.frame function contains the prefix v and the data frame created by the data.frame function contains the prefix x. So for that reason, the new data frame contains the column names x1, x2, x3, and x4. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.